Only 23 players in MLB history have hit over 250 home runs with over 250 stolen bases in their career. Most of the guys are exactly who you'd expect. Many of these guys played for one team their whole career, with those organizations recognizing the rare talent they had on their hands. Guys like Derek Jeter, Robin Yount, Craig Biggio, and Ryan Sandberg. And then, there's Mike Cameron. Cameron was a damn good ball player, one of just 58 players since the beginning of the wildcard era, with over 45.0 career wins above replacement. He also played elite defense, racking up three gold gloves as a career center fielder. These are just a couple of the reasons why I find it incredibly surprising that the guy only ever made one all-star team and played for eight different teams in a very successful 17-year career. It's time we talk in length about him, because he's better than you remember. Cameron, of course, was a buried gem in his draft, an 18th round pick for the Chicago White Sox in the 1991 draft out of LaGrange High School in Georgia. He wouldn't find sustained success until 1997, where he was an above-average league hitter. As Cameron took a step back with a disappointing 1998 season, many teams still saw the potential he held as a five-tool caliber player. One of those teams was the Cincinnati Reds. This would be the first of two massive trades that Cameron was a part of during his career. And Cameron was solid in one lone season for the Reds in 1996. He hit 34 doubles, 21 home runs, and stole 38 bases with an 825 OPS. The only problem is what the Reds gave up to get him. A first baseman who'd end up being one of the greatest hitters in White Sox franchise history, Paul Kronecko. The 1999 Reds won 96 games, but lost a game 163 to the Mets and missed out on the playoffs, so they looked to bulk up even further. Cameron stole 38 bases, good for fifth in the National League. He also racked up 5.3 F war during the 1999 season, 12th highest in the National League, and the best of any position player on the Reds that year. But with a future Hall of Famer available via trade, that wasn't going to matter much. In the offseason, Mike Cameron was the marquee piece in the trade that sent Ken Griffey Jr. from Seattle to the Cincinnati Reds. But in Cameron's four seasons in Seattle, he registered 18.4 war, which beats out Ken Griffey Jr.'s 12.9 war that he compiled in 10 seasons with the Reds. These four seasons would be the longest that Cameron spent with any sole team in his entire career that spanned nearly two decades. Now, when Cameron arrived, the mood wasn't great in Seattle. Griffey Jr. had forced his way out of the organization, and with his no trade clause eliminating many suitors, the Mariners didn't get the best package possible they could have for the MVP caliber player. Cameron was really the only good piece they got back in this transaction. That being said, he was really good upon arrival, even with the tall order of succeeding the greatest Mariner of all time. After a disappointing 99 season where they won just 79 games, the 2000 Mariners bounced back in a major way with a 91 win season, and Mike Cameron was patrolling center field for all of it. In some semblance of sweet revenge, Cameron's new team in Seattle disposed of the very White Sox that gave up on him five years prior with a 3-1 ALDS victory. Their run would end in the ALCS, but this was just the trailer to the movie that would be the 2001 season. Where have I heard that line before? The 2001 Mariners racked up the most wins of any team ever in the expansion era, with an astounding 116-46 record, and Mike Cameron was one of their seven All-Stars that year. In one of the best seasons of his entire career, Cameron eclipsed 100 RBI for the first and only time in his career. He was one of just three AL players in 2001 with at least 25 home runs and 30 stolen bases. He snagged his first All-Star nod and Gold Glove award as well. He was one of three Seattle Mariners in the top eight of American League wins above replacement alongside Brett Boone and Ichiro Suzuki. The Mariners marched into the playoffs with one of the best lineups ever and won a five-game nail-biter of a series against Cleveland in the ALDS. He provided the eventual winning hit in Game 2, an early two-run homer off Chuck Finley that gave Seattle a lead that they wouldn't relinquish. But the legendary run would be cut short as Seattle was cut down in five games by the Yankees in the ALCS. The Mariners won 93 games in each of the subsequent two seasons, but never managed to return to the playoffs. In fact, it would take them a long while to get back. But Mike Cameron continued to play exceptionally well for the Northwestern juggernaut. He also made Major League history in this time frame, becoming just the 15th player in MLB history to hit four home runs in a single game. That's the kind of caliber of player Mike Cameron was. Including his 1999 season with the Reds, Mike Cameron was one of just seven players from 1999 to 2003 to smack over 100 home runs and steal over 100 bases in this five-year span. That list includes the likes of Vladimir Guerrero and Carlos Beltran. He's the only man on that list with 5.0 defensive wins above replacement or more as well, and he racked up 6.4 total. D-War is by no means a perfect statistic, in fact it's hard to even assume its reliability. 
Cameron played in a time where elite defense couldn't really be measured as accurately as it is now, and if we had resources that gave insight into range, jump time, sprint speed, and more during his era, I think we would have held him in a higher regard and appreciated him more. Come the end of the 2003 season, it was time for the former 18th round pick to finally get his bag, as Mike Cameron was set to hit free agency. Unsurprisingly, Cameron had many suitors as a power defensive speed threat in center field turning just 31 years old. The New York Mets came away the victors, agreeing with Cameron on terms for a three-year, $19.5 million contract. Nowadays, he probably would have made $19 million in a single year instead of three years, but I digress. Cameron did see his batting average drop about 20 points below his then-career average in his first season in New York in 2004. Back then, batting 231 was an alarming thing, but Cameron counteracted this with his first career 30 homer season. Cameron was ultimately an above-league average hitter yet again and played great defense despite the tougher dimensions of Shea Stadium. This would mark Cameron's seventh consecutive season playing over 140 games as well. After underachieving greatly with a 71-win season, the Mets spent big that offseason. The acquisition of Carlos Beltran prompted Cameron to move to a corner outfield position for the first time in his career. The pairing of Beltran and Cameron, two power speed threats with great outfield defense, looked like a match made in heaven, until an ugly turn of events derailed everything the Mets were envisioning out there. With the Mets a few games over 500 fighting for a playoff spot in mid-August, Cameron was finding himself building another impressive season at a new position. But in a cruel twist of fate, a fly ball yielded diving attempts from both him and Beltron, causing a violent collision. Cameron suffered multiple facial fractures and a concussion and was carted off the field in a very scary sight. This would end up being Cameron's final game as a New York Met, as they played just 500 ball the rest of the way without him and missed the playoffs yet again. Unsure of his future, they shipped Cameron off in a one-for-one -one player swap, acquiring Xavier Nady. Funnily enough, he'd be traded to the Padres, the very same team who the Mets were playing against when Cameron suffered his scary injury. But Cameron was able to recover fully for his ensuing stint in San Diego. In his two seasons on the West Coast, Cameron once again played in over 140 games both times, making that nine times in ten years that he had done so. Alongside slugging first baseman Adrian Gonzalez and former Met all-star catcher Mike Piazza, Cameron was one of the best three hitters on the team as the Padres won 88 games and returned to the playoffs with an NL West crown. Cameron put together the fifth 2020 season of his career to that point and won his second Gold Glove Award while also receiving MVP votes for just the second time in his career. This comeback was truly impressive. Cameron would hit over 20 home runs and remain above league average in terms of OPS Plus for each of the next three seasons of his career with both the Padres and the Brewers. He saw the 08 Brewers return to the playoffs for the first time in decades thanks to his help as well. This was something of a trend in Cameron's career despite his large number of different teams. If Mike Cameron was on your team, that meant your team was going to win a ton of games. From 1997 to 2009, the only team that didn't win at least 80 games were the 2004 Mets. He went to the playoffs four times with three different teams. This includes the Padres, who won over 83 games for the first time in nearly a decade thanks to his help, as well as the aforementioned Brewers, who snapped their 25-year-old playoff drought with Cameron patrolling center field. I'm not saying he was the only reason, but this isn't a coincidence either. Cameron was a proven winner. In 2009, he clubbed the 250th home run of his career. This would, unfortunately, be the last high note of Cameron's now long 15-year career. His two-year deal with the Red Sox at age 37 was where the wheels finally came off, as groin injuries finally caught up to him and kept him off the field for the majority of the season. He played just 48 games in 2010, just the second time in 13 years that he played under 120 games in a season. The guy was a beacon of consistency, but in his old age, his powers finally began to wane. Finally, after another injury-riddled season in 2011, Cameron announced his retirement in 2012 after a 17-year career. Mike Cameron accomplished a lot during his long career, but his retirement was surprisingly not big news in the baseball world, considering the caliber of player he was. So why don't we take some time to really appreciate just how good he was here at the end of his player profile. Cameron is one of just eight players in the wildcard era to hit over 275 home runs, while also maintaining a defensive wins above replacement above 10.0. Along with Alfonso Soriano and Carlos Beltran, Mike Cameron is one of just three players from 1999 to 2009 to hit over 240 home runs and steal over 240 bases. In that same window, he's one of just 25 players to play in over 1,500 games. That is a very small group of guys who played the majority of every single season playing above league average offense and elite defense for 10 years in a row, and Mike Cameron is in that group. I think it highlights what made Cameron so great. You knew exactly what kind of production you were getting out of him year in and year out, and aside from one freak injury that derailed one season,
season, he was as advertised every season and lived up to his billing every year. You can't say that for a lot of guys. If I was a general manager, I would have bet a lot on Cameron to have him as my surefire piece in a lineup, and that's probably why he did so much winning in his career. Still, even after all this research and all this talk, I don't understand why he ended up on so many different teams. But who knows, we may see the second coming of Mike Cameron sooner than we may expect. His son, Daz Cameron, was the marquee piece of the Justin Verlander trade between Houston and Detroit, and though things haven't come together as planned just yet, the former first round pick was picked up by the Orioles recently and could provide some value to a club looking to compete in the immediate future. I sure hope so, because I'd love to see the Cameron legacy live on. Mike Cameron stayed healthy and productive for basically 17 years in a row, and if you want to stay healthy and productive at the top of your game, you gotta go to Roman. Thank you to Roman for sponsoring today's video. They're the digital health clinic for men, and they offer genuine FDA-approved medication for as little as $4 per dose. At Roman, there's no waiting rooms and no hassle, just a straightforward and convenient digital experience, which means you can take care of all of it from the comfort of your home. Getting started is simple. Just grab your laptop or mobile device and start your free online visit today. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan possible. If medication is appropriate, Roman sends it right to your door with free two-day shipping, and everything arrives in discreet packaging. It's your business. And right now, Roman has a special offer just for you guys. Use the link in my description to get 20% off your first order, or go to row.co slash jolly today. That's ro.co slash jolly for 20% off your first order. Stay at the peak of your physicality and health with Roman today. Thank you to Roman for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you guys next time.